you know, where, where the Native Americans killed Custer, and it's been pretty bad for them ever since. Fast forward, then they had a shootout with the FBI. They were punished again for that. And so that community holds all the records no one would want for illiteracy, for teenage suicide, for teenage pregnancy, for death by gunfire, you name it, they own it. And uh, they have prevented some really amazing things from happening. For example, there's uranium under the reservation. So people obviously came and said we gave offered them millions of dollars to mine that. And they said, no, that's not ours to mine and it's not yours. You know, that's Mother Earth, we don't mess with that. Um, and they've done that repeatedly. And they said no to Custer and they said no to the FBI. And so when we started working with them, I said, okay, we're all really clear about what you don't want. And we think something about what you do want. And they've just given up hope. And so now they're starting to define what they want and how they're going to come together to get that. And this young lady is one of the young people in that community. And what we agreed is to agree on some goals for what I call the year of perfect vision 2020, which is not that far away. But we have a tendency to talk about 2050. All that stuff. Well, that's too soft. You know, if it's 2020, then every one of us here have to have a role tomorrow on what we're going to do the next day to change the outcome by 2020. So when, when she gets to 2020, she can say, thank God for what Steve did, you know, because he made the difference, or whomever. I think that's really the urgency of where we are. So with that, I'll open it up. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, I heard on NPR just this week where they were talking about the economics of Greenberg and the concerns about trying to attract some economic development and, and some big business to, to move in there. Can you talk a little bit more about that and maybe the way that they can sell that commercially yes. to bring in business. Yeah. Well, Greensburg, because of what they did and their boldness, they've had some really interesting opportunities. For example, a plane <coughs> the Chinese flew to Greensburg. They flew near Greensburg and drove to Greensburg. Uh, and they asked them what they wanted to do, what new industries did they want. They were ready to invest in new activities and new business in Greensburg. But at the time, the city leadership couldn't quite come together over what exactly that would be. Well, uh, investors, whether from US or China, are really not too big on uncertainty, right? They wanted to hear, here are the three things we need the most, and here's the plan, and here, they didn't have that yet. What they have done, actually the first building finished was not the 804 building, but it was an incubator. And the business incubator, credit to them, they have actually generated, some of, the, some of them had businesses when the storm came, but they weren't sure they could afford to build a new building and, and support it. So they started the incubator, they got enough traction, they have now built their buildings and they're in them. But it's all been that kind of small scale, one on four kind of deal. Uh, the most famous of all of them, of course, is the uh, John Deere dealership who decided to build back even though they had a dealership in the two neighboring towns. But they did it for the community. Not only did they build back, they built the first lead platinum John Deere dealership on the planet. And as they were in the conversation about doing the new wind farm, they said, Bob, aren't there smaller versions of those big wind generators? We kind of remember farmers used to have windmills. We said, sure. And they said, could you connect us with some of those manufacturers? And we did. Now they are a wind distributor. And just to give you an idea, uh, they, they have contracts in 36 states and six Canadian provinces as a wind distributor. And they have the best economic profile of any John Deere dealership on the planet. In addition to the wind generators, they discovered that, you know, when you see those big things out on the plane, those big green machines, the person in there is not driving. There's actually a satellite signal that's coming to a laptop computer that calculates exactly what should be distributed at what rate over what path is the most efficient way to cover this land. And the person's there because in rural areas, cell service is pretty bad and occasionally loses signal 
and when it does, the thing just goes off in the ditch or something. So they're there to capture it and save the equipment. Uh, because of that weak cell service, the brothers who own the dealership said, what if we, maybe we can help out. <coughs> so if we sell someone a wind generator, we can put a little receiver, a cell receiver, transmitter, and give them perfect coverage. So they'll never lose signal. Well, that's, that worked. But also it gave everyone in that community perfect coverage for the first time. So that's been a real benefit. Now, that thinking hasn't percolated up through the whole community yet. Uh, but there are a number of things underway, and I think if the community leadership shows a little more courage and a little more um, collaboration, they will benefit from some of these potential investors, whether they're U.S. or Chinese, because they have built back a really resilient town. The, high, the K-12 school is off the charts with respect to performance. They have a main street that's like the old fashioned main street, and they have a really resilient community. So I think they have real potential if they can get their arms around. But it's an open question. It's not, no guarantees here. Yes? Do you think food production could change based on, um, I'm just thinking about yeah. chemicals and? Yeah. So could okay. food production change? Absolutely. Does it need to? Absolutely. Uh, so one of, the, one of their options would be, and we actually introduced them to someone who was <coughs> working on this, is taking uh, agricultural waste and using it as a resource and using their wastewater as a resource to create greenhouses to grow plants that are basically high quality medicinal plants. And the value of those is like 20 fold of the regular plant. But they have other more accessible possibilities like growing their own quality food and growing it in this integrated way so it consumes very little water and pesticides or herbicides and no GMOs and pretty soon they can have a reputation as the place for you know the Greensburg food program. And there's a huge opportunity for that. But they have to claim it to do it. Yeah. Hi. Um, so the food desert was a term from the nineties and the two thousands. Now it's a service desert and one of the things you mentioned is about the Commerce Bank becoming a resource for services. Have you considered using some of the abandoned homes in the Gizmo get areas uh, for inviting people in from a service standpoint, uh, especially from a healthcare standpoint, uh, letting those homes be um, satellite healthcare facilities? Yes. And phase two at Bancroft is just that. So phase two is to create patient money to allow people that own a home there that's in pretty bad shape to do retrofits and repairs on that home and get really patient money to support them so doing. And to start buying, uh, and the, the phase two is 20 vacant lots, then it would be built new. Some would be, some of the rehabbed houses, empty houses would be rehabbed for that purpose, and, and some of the new construction would be for that purpose, but most would be for housing. And there is, Kansas City has now a pretty unique opportunity in that with Google Fiber, Lots of young people are moving into Kansas City to start companies because of that high-speed service and bandwidth. And so Google is providing that to individual homes. And so these young people are you know, buying a home or renting a home and getting Google Fiber and five startup companies or 10 startup companies in one house. And there'll be some of that, we hope, in Manheim Park. I guess not. Uh, we really thank you a lot for coming. There were about 50 people here, and our first uh, streaming audience was 12. So we had 62 people here today, and <laughs> no telling what will happen next. <laughs> Thanks a lot, everyone, for coming. It's a gorgeous day out there. Please enjoy your weekend safely, and thanks very much for coming. Bye-bye.